B2B and online marketing. So firstly, we will understand the meaning of B2B and online marketing. B2B is also called business marketing. Business marketing is the practice of individuals or organizations, including commercial businesses, governments and institutions, facilitating the sale of their products or services to other companies or organizations that in turn resell them, use them as components in products or services they offer, or use them to support their operations. There is a difference between B2B, that is business marketing, and B2C, that is consumer marketing. Business marketing generally entails shorter and more direct channels of distribution, while consumer marketing is aimed at large groups through mass media and retailer. The negotiation process between the buyer and seller is more personal in business marketing than in consumer marketing. Most business marketeers commit only a small part of their promotional budgets to advertising, and that is usually through direct mail efforts and trade journals, but consumer market involves a lot of advertising. In a business market, the buyer or a business unit is both buyer and seller, while in consumer market, company is the seller and general masses are the buyer. Some of the characteristics of B2B market are B2B markets have a more complex decision-making unit because it involves business unit on both sides, that is buyer and seller. B2B buyers are more rational. The truth is that as consumers, we are often less well-informed and less accountable to others. But a business unit has full knowledge about market practices and they have resources to know the market condition. Thus, they are rational. B2B products are often more complex. A business market is rigid in terms of demand and specifications of buyers. They are well attached with the time limits given to meet the order. There is limited number of buying units in B2B markets. There is also a matter of scale. In consumer markets, there are reasonable limits to the amount that a single person can buy and use of any product. But business units are large buyers in terms of amount. Personal relationships are more important in B2B markets. B2B buyers are longer term buyers. This means that the customers shifting to new seller is much more in consumer market than in business market. B2B markets drive innovation less than consumer markets. Consumer markets rely far more on packaging. After studying this lesson, we should be able to understand the concept of B2B marketing, discuss the concept of online marketing, get a brief idea of Consumer Protection Act 2002. Now let's discuss B2B marketing communications program. The purpose of B2B marketing communications is to support the organization's sales efforts and improve company profitability. B2B marketing communication tactics generally include advertising, public relations, direct mail, trade show support, sales collateral, branding, and interactive services such as website design and search engine optimization. An important first step in business to business marketing is the development of your positioning statement. This is a statement of what you do and how you do it differently and better and more efficiently than your competitors. The next step is to develop your messages. There is usually a primary message that conveys more strongly to your customers what you do and the benefit it offers to them, supported by a number of secondary messages, each of which may have a number of supporting arguments, facts and figures. Whatever form your B2B marketing campaign will take, build a comprehensive plan upfront to target resources where you believe they will deliver the best return on investment and make sure you have all the infrastructure in place to support each stage of the marketing process. A standard briefing document is usually a good idea for briefing an agency. Typical elements to an agency brief are your objectives, target market, target audience, product, campaign description, 
your product positioning, graphical considerations, corporate guidelines, and any other supporting material and distribution. And at last turn comes to measure the result. Measure your impact upon your desired objectives, be it cost per acquisition, cost per lead, or tangible changes in customer perception. Now let's discuss online marketing. Online marketing is also called internet marketing. Internet marketing ties together creative and technical aspects of the internet including design, development, advertising and sales. Online marketing involves the marketing of products or services on the internet. Successful online marketing requires good search engine marketing strategies. Good online marketing strategies keep the web user returning to your website. It has various positive and negative effect on market. Some of the positive effects are your store is open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Further, your customers are worldwide and can shop anytime that they want to. The cost of spreading your message is next to nothing. Emailing your subscription base is more often cheaper than sending a letter through mail. Updating your subscribers can be done almost instantly through email. Visitors to your website can get up to the minute information on each visit. If you are having a sale, your customers can start shopping at the discounted prices literally as soon as they open their email. If you have an information sensitive business such as a law firm, newspaper or online magazine, you can deliver your products directly to your customers without having to use a courier. We can access the global audience thus mass market coverage. The available information on the internet about any item is extensive in terms of quantity and quality and a customer is in a better position to compare various alternatives to choose what is more suited to his or her specific needs and wants. Internet makes it possible for customers to post their specifications with respect to the product or service and at what price it would be acceptable and then sellers make offers to buyers. Internet auction sites are available where a prospective customer can record her or his bid. eBay is the largest online auctioneer with more than 40 million registered sellers and buyers selling or bidding for more than 125 million diverse items including retired ships or submarines. Unlike traditional marketing channels that involve more levels, Internet has made it possible to skip one or more levels or create direct to customer channel in case of many durable and non-durable product categories and services. Some of its negative effects are the Internet is still regarded as a source of information gathering for majority of your customers. Of the number of visitors to your site, the vast majority of visitors who are motivated to buy will do so in person. Many people prefer the live interaction when they buy. If you have a small business with one location, this may deter customers from buying. Slightly over 50% of households shop online. While that number will continue to grow, you are reaching less than 2 out of 3 households. There is a lot of competition for your product already out there. By the time your visitor finds you, they have already been clicking many links. Unless they can find what they are looking for quickly, they are gone. Approaches for internet marketing are banners, sponsorships, pop-up and pop-under, portal use, email, interstitials, push technologies. A web banner or banner ad is a form of advertising on the World Wide Web. It is intended to attract traffic to a website by linking to the website of the advertiser. The advertisement is constructed from an image, JavaScript program or multimedia object employing technologies such as Java, Shopware or Flash, often employing animation, sound or video to maximize presence. 
Sponsorships are often considered a workable alternative to traditional ads because they play down their commercial nature. An approach welcomed by jaded consumers wary of being peddled products in ways deemed abrasive and obtrusive. But sponsorships are often more costly and more elaborate than conventional ads, generating doubts among some advertisers as to whether they really want to spend the additional time and money. Pop-ups are generally new web browser windows to display advertisements. The pop-up window containing an advertisement is usually generated by JavaScript, but can be generated by other means as well. A variation on the pop-up window is the pop under advertisement, which opens a new browser window hidden under the active window. Pop under does not interrupt the user immediately and are not seen until the covering window is closed, making it more difficult to determine which website opened them. When a visitor follows directed search, the marketer's name appears prominently at or near the top of the list, which is called portal use. For example, when anyone uses Yahoo search engine to locate a toy marketer, the name of KB Toys is displayed prominently. Email is the electronic mails with which we all are well acquainted. Nowadays, these are most common form of internet marketing. You can see various emails in your account mostly found in spam. But the main disadvantage is that these mails are left unread and then deleted. Interstitials are web page advertisements that are displayed before or after an expected content page, often to display advertisements or confirm the user's age. In this context, interstitial is used in the sense of in between. The interstitial web page sits between a reference page and the page which references it. Hence, it is in between two pages. This is distinct from a page which simply links directly to another in that the interstitial page serves only to provide extra information to a user during the act of navigating from one page to the next. Push technology or server push describes a style of internet-based communication where the request for a given transaction is initiated by the publisher or central server. It is contrasted with pull technology where the request for the transmission of information is initiated by the receiver or client. Now we can understand what Internet Banking is. Online banking or Internet Banking allows customers to conduct financial transactions on a secure website operated by the retail or virtual bank, credit union or building society. All the transactions are done electronically. Features commonly unique to internet banking include personal financial management support such as importing data into personal accounting software. Some online banking platforms support account aggregation to allow the customers to monitor all of their accounts in one place whether they are with their main bank or with other institutions. Protection through single password authentication, as is the case in most secure internet shopping sites, is not considered secure enough for personal online banking applications in some countries. Basically, there exist two different security methods for online banking. The PIN or TAN system where the PIN represents a password used for the login and TANs representing one-time passwords to authenticate transactions. TANs can be distributed in different ways. The most popular one is to send a list of TANs to the online banking user by postal letter. Signature-based online banking where all transactions are signed and encrypted digitally. The keys for signature generation and encryption can be stored on smart cards or any memory medium depending on the concrete implementation. Emerging challenges for Internet banking are demand-side pressure due to increasing access to low-cost electronic services, emergence of open standards for banking functionality, growing customer awareness and need of transparency, global players in the fray, close integration of bank services with web-based e-commerce or even disintermediation of services through direct electronic payments or e-cash. 
more convenient international transactions due to the fact that the internet along with general deregulation trends eliminates geographic boundaries. Move from one-stop shopping to banking portfolio, that is, unbundled product purchases. Let's consider Consumer Protection Act 2002. Section 2D of the Consumer Protection Act 1986 defines consumer as any person who buys any goods for a consideration which has been paid or promised or partly paid and partly promised or under any system of deferred payment and includes any user of such goods other than the person who buys such goods for consideration paid or promised or partly paid or partly promised or under any system of deferred payment when such use is made with the approval of such person but does not include a person who obtains such goods for resale or for any commercial purpose. In its scope, the Act covers all goods and services including banking, insurance, transport, processing, electricity, doctors, etc. in private, public and cooperative sectors. A consumer can lodge a complaint individually or jointly or a voluntary consumer organization. The complaint can be lodged at any forum by a simple written application in duplicate with details of the case, the name and full address of the complaint and the relief sought along with the copies of the supporting documents. Limitation for lodging the complaint under the Act is two years from the date of cause of action. The complaints for disputes involving up to rupees 20 lakh can be filed in the district forum. State forum deals with the complaints more than rupees 20 lakh to rupees 1 crore and the National Commission deals with complaints over rupees 1 crore. The cases not involving testing or analysis of the goods and commodities should be disposed of in three months. The cases at state and national commissions should be disposed of in three months. Non-compliance of orders of the forum or lodging of frivolous complaint may result in the imprisonment of one month to three years or fine not less than rupees 2000 and up to rupees 10,000 or both. The appeals can be as under. Appeal against the judgment of district forum is to be filed before the state commission by deposit of rupees 25,000 or 50% of the claim amount, whichever is less. Appeal against the judgment of district forum is to be filed before the national commission by deposit of rupees 35,000 or 50% of the claim amount, whichever is less. Appeal against the judgment of National Commission is to be filed before the Supreme Court by deposit of rupees 50,000 or 50% 50 of the claim amount, whichever is less. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. B2B marketing is the practice of organizations facilitating the sale of their products or services to other companies. Right or wrong? Right. B2B dealings are more frequent and of large amount in comparison to consumer market. Right or wrong? Wrong. In sponsorships, the advertiser is given a permanent place on host's website and pays a sponsorship fee to the host. Right or wrong? Right. Let's revise. Business to B2B marketing is the practice of individuals or organizations including commercial businesses, governments and institutions facilitating the sale of their products or services to other companies or organizations that in turn resell them, use them as components in products or services they offer or use them to support their operations. B2B marketing communication tactics generally include advertising, public relations, direct mail, trade show support, sales collateral, branding and interactive services such as website design and search engine optimization. Internet marketeers have to make their websites attractive to the right target audience so that they are motivated to visit their specific websites. Developing and maintaining a website requires considerable effort to attract visitors to the site and to encourage them to return to it again and again requires creativity, effective marketing and regularly updating the site. Depending on the product category and the company's marketing objectives for the internet, 
A website can be just a simple source of information about the company and its products or a powerful tool to build brand image, a means to offer samples or generating sales leads. To achieve promotional objectives, companies use banners, sponsorships, pop-ups, pop-under, emails, interstitials, push technologies, contests and sweepstakes, etc. The major concerns companies have relate to service backup and security related to transactions on the Internet. It is particularly security from consumers' point of view that discourages them from recording credit card or personal information on website.